to the inner verse. Welcome to the One Within All to Another episode of the Interverse Podcast. Today I have an incredible guest to return to the show for his second round. We talked to George, I think it was early 2022, and he gave us the scoop on his invention, the AquaCure, which is a device for hydrogenating water through an electrolysis process that gives a very bioenergetically and bioavailable uh type of hydrogen to our cellular structure that allows our our entire system to potentially heal from things that otherwise didn't have the energy to do. And although I myself have not been able to uh, try out the aqua cure yet, I have many, many friends who have picked one up and have reported very interesting results. And, uh, you know, today we're going to recap some of the who's it's what's it's with this amazing device. Uh, George, last time around, if you want to catch that episode, I highly recommend it. He shared a lot of his personal story, his you know background as an inventor, uh, what motivated him in a big way to make sure that this device gets out to the larger world. And it's just an all around fascinating and brilliant individual. There are many different ways that you could potentially acquire an aqua cure, including, I believe, building your own. George isn't the type of guy that's trying to gatekeep something that could help humanity. He's, in fact, doing everything he can to make sure that it's as low cost as possible and available to as many people as possible. You can check out the episode description in this particular show or any of my episodes to find a link to the AquaCure, including a coupon code listed there where you get a discount on the device and it's a sizable one while also supporting me and Interverse with the purchase. There are a lot of ways you can support Interverse, though. You can check out Typica New Herbs, get some really great tinctures with the uh, Interverse coupon code there as well, or pick up my audio books that I have done with Dylan Sicoccio. <laughs> and anyway, there's so much to talk about with George, I'm sure. He's a guy that's just always making stuff happen, and it's going to be fun to catch up and see what you know new things he's got to talk about with us today. George, thank you for being here, and welcome back to Interverse, buddy. Thank you very much for having on the having me on your platform i really appreciate uh, invites like this because uh, it helps it helps me help more people and that that just it just benefit to everyone so glad to be here love love your show and let's let's go <laughs> let's go yeah for those that you know maybe are a little fuzzy on it it's never a bad idea to recap just what the device is how it works what we're here to help people understand in terms of the potential of utilizing such a simple and i mean really simple hydrogen is the simplest of elements <laughs> uh, in ways that humanity has not up to this point been missing out on maybe the ancients knew but it's a uh, quite a remarkable device and George, can you give us a little bit of a recap on that? Uh, yeah, it just reminded me when you were saying ancients, I ran across some research. I don't, I can't put my hands on it right at the moment, but it showed that hydrogen was actually uh, um, experimented on for health purposes over 200 years ago, 200 years ago. And modern medical science is just now catching up to, to that again. It's, uh, it's astonishing how some of these things get lost. In any case, <clears throat> Uh, we'll just uh, quickly recap. Uh, hydrogen itself is good. Hydrogen itself is 62% of our body. 62% of our body volume is hydrogen, not weight, but volume, because hydrogen is a very light molecule. So it takes up uh, room without adding a lot of weight. In any case, 
the um, and 24% oxygen, 12% carbon, and only 2% everything else. <clears throat> so it's really important to uh, remember that um, hydrogen is our most important macronutrient, not micronutrient, macronutrient, okay. And we end up not getting as much hydrogen as we should because we can't just inhale it like um, from the air. And I have a Brown's gas machine sitting here beside me, so. Aqua Cure, I just hook up my cannulas because I usually start an interview like this without the cannulas on so that I can explain that I'm putting them on because I'm inhaling Brown's gas right now. So the, um, in any case, what we have is uh, our gut microbiome usually gets our hydrogen from our food, hydrocarbons when we eat. So when we masticate or chew our food, we put in some enzymes and then we run it through an acid bath in our stomach and then we run it through the lower intestines with bile and that sort of thing. Also a bunch of uh, microorganisms in there, what they call a microbiome. And then by the time you get to your colon, which is the large intestine, just before you uh, eject the, the uh, compost or the food, <laughs> we, uh, uh, there's a specialized bacteria that's supposed to be there that actually finishes breaking off the carbons from the hydrogen, which takes a lot of energy. So all these enzymes and catalysts and, and pre, Preparation lowers the energy requirement to the point where these bacteria can break the carbons off from the hydrogen. The hydrogen goes through the intestinal wall into the bloodstream. Yes, your lower intestine breathes. Uh, in fact, they've, they've started doing things like when people get lung compromised, they can actually put uh, oxygen in, the, uh, in, in, in your uh, rectum and you can you get your blood oxygen levels back up again. Just very interesting. Anyway, the hydrogen goes into the bloodstream there and that's how you get your hydrogen which is 62% of our body. So, hey, it's important. Unfortunately, uh, things like glyphosate, uh, artificial sweeteners, uh, uh, antibiotics, antibiotics are a, a lovely invention, but it kills the good bacteria as, as well as the bad bacteria. And then your microbiome is compromised. And over the long term, you actually end up uh, compromising your immune system, even though you've used the uh, antibiotics to stop a critical uh, infection right at one point, then down the way, your immune system gets compromised because the hydrogen is one of the most important things in your immune system. So what happens when you get a lack of hydrogen, your body starts shutting off systems that it doesn't need immediately. Like uh, immediately would be, you got a saber tooth tiger, you got to run away from. So like uh, if the body, something, a way that the body normally acts when you're getting cold, is it shuts off bloodstream to your extremities to preserve core, uh, core temperature. This is uh, hypothermic uh, type knowledge. So what we end up with is the body starts shutting off things that use hydrogen, but because you don't have enough hydrogen, we're trying to preserve life. So the body, amazing body, our, our bodies are astonishing. Every time, every time I'm learning something new, it just, it, it's incredible. Anyway, the regeneration systems shut off first because they're the least life-threatening in the immediate. Uh, so you scar instead of uh, um, repair. So your stem cells, all that sort of thing shut off. And a scar is like a patch rather than a, a healing. So if you have a scar anywhere on your body, you are probably hydrogen deficient because your body hasn't healed it. I don't have any scars on my body anymore. Once I started inhaling the Brown's gas in March of 2016, my scars started to fade, and within a couple of years, they were all gone. So, and, and I had quite a few because I grew up on a cattle ranch <laughs> and did some stupid things and accidents and what have you. Just, uh, I got lots of stories. I, get, I, I read a quote recently, bad decisions make good stories. So I, I had a lot of that. <laughs> anyway, scars all gone. Because what happened, and the next thing that happens if you're, uh, you still don't have enough hydrogen is your immune systems start to shut off and you get sick a lot easier. And then last, uh, if you still don't have enough hydrogen, your organs start to fail. They call this autoimmune diseases, that sort of thing, like lupus, for example, and, you're, and you die. So getting the hydrogen supplementation, get your, your organs healed, and the skin is the largest organ on your body. So all that scars healing on that was good. But also I had warts and, uh, and I had neuropathies uh, on, in my skin. So I wasn't able to feel 
like I was no nerve, no feeling from my knees to my feet. Uh, and all that feeling came back because my nerves regenerated. I also uh, want to say I, I had warts. Warts are a virus. And all my warts disappeared. I had hand warts and a planter's wart. And, the, uh, and, the, and they all disappeared. So warts that I'd had for 50 years were gone because my immune system got strong enough to uh, get rid of those viruses. So, and, and then the last thing was the uh, uh, regeneration systems came back online. I had a heart murmur, for example, that my grandfather actually died of a weak heart valve. And uh, I, so it's congenital that that, that that would happen in our family. And that uh, weak heart valve has healed. I, I no longer have a heart murmur. I, a doctor confirmed. <laughs> so uh, it's, the body heals. The Brown's gas heals the body. Now, when I say Brown's gas, I'm I'm also talking about hydrogen because people say, what is Brown's gas? And Brown's gas is 67% hydrogen, 33% oxygen. But the hydrogen and oxygen are combined in different ways than the H2 and O2, the, like O2 air that we have, oxygen we normally breathe, and H2, what they call molecular hydrogen. Uh, because atomic hydrogen would just be an H. So when you get the two hydrogens combined together, it's called a molecule. And they, so it's called molecular hydrogen. So in any case, hydrogen is good as a supplementation, but it's only a building block. It's only a, a piece of nutrition, if you will. The body still needs energy and intelligence to put that brick where it needs to go. So if you have a pile of bricks, you need energy and intelligence to make a brick house. So your body, like the brick house, has to decide where the hydrogen goes, but it also has to have the energy to get there. And why the Brown's gas is better than just straight pure hydrogen is because when people are ill, which most of us are these days, we've become, ener our energy generation systems have been compromised and our energy reserves have been depleted. So the Brown's gas adds an additional factor into the, the mix called electrically expanded water. So you've got your oxygen, your hydrogen, and your electrically expanded water, which is actually still water, H2O, hydrogen and oxygen. So it's still part of that 67%, 33%. But as I say, the atoms are in a different configuration. In this case, they're still water. So water has soaked up electrons until it's become a gaseous form of water that is not water vapor or steam. This is called a plasma or state of matter. So what's happened is the Brown's gas electrolyzers are specifically designed to make hydrogen on the cathode, oxygen on the anode, and then right in the middle between the two, a third gas forms, which is the electrically expanded water. And Brown's gas machines are the only ones that can do that. The regular hydrogen generation machines have a membrane in the middle that prevents the electron bridge that goes from the cathode to the, to the anode that the, when the electrons are going across, it stuffs the electrons into water and it forms the electrically expanded water. So regular, uh, um, I guess I'd call it Faraday uh, electrolyzers that just make hydrogen and oxygen from water can't make the Brown's gas because they can't make this electrically expanded water, which is approximately 30 to 40 percent of the gas that's coming out of a Brown's gas machine and has all of these bioavailable electrons. And these bioavailable electrons give the body energy, gives the body energy to heal uh, fa about 30% faster than just plain hydrogen alone. So the, that, and that's what science is, is proving in, in studying studies and experiments where they're, they had in Germany, for example, this zebra fish experiment where they were putting brown gas in the water after they had wounded some zebra fish. They had another tank with just hydrogen being put in the water. And the Brown's gas uh, zebrafish healed 30% faster than the uh, just the plain hydrogen zebrafish uh, supplemented. So this is the advantage of the Brown's gas over straight hydrogen. I, I'm sorry, I've done a lot of talking. Did you have any questions? No, this is a really good recap. And uh, I love that about you. You can just get into the zone and <laughs> flow through all kinds of really useful information. I think... One of the most profound insights that I took away from our last talk and have carried it forward is the notion that the body won't kick off any process of healing or regeneration or detox 
unless it has the energy to see it through to the all the way to the end. Right. So, it, you know, that's why things hang out. They don't just like the, the scar doesn't gradually heal. It just doesn't start until the body can actually, you know, have us the throughput to finish it. And that's been a really useful thing to understand as I'm a biofield tuning practitioner. And this is a different type of way to restore energy and flow of energy to the body and particularly in an intelligent way <laughs> in the sense that the, the biofield energy, like the plasma in our field around us, it, you know, it is a type of plasma according to Eileen McCusick, who I learned a lot about this from, um, you know, it has, it's also con constituent aspect of your mind, in my opinion, that your subtle energy field is actually your consciousness as well. And so my point is that as I've done many, many tunings for people since we last spoke, I've no, I've gotten a lot of feedback from people where, you know, they actually, actually will be come, they'll become symptomatic after a tuning for just a brief period, a couple of days, they might be exhausted, they might feel physically sore, they might get like symptoms of a cold or some other detox process, but then it finishes and they feel way better than they did before. So, you know, that's a, to me an indication of sometimes it has to hurt a little bit to heal, but uh, you know, with all that being said, is there anything you would add to it? Wow. Yes. Uh, you're absolutely correct. That's, that's a, that's a distinct understanding that people need to know is that we are energetic beings. To the core, we have, we're a physical manifestation of energetic beings and how our, our energy fields are organized according to our consciousness is absolutely vital. Uh, people, they, we walk around in these amazing bodies and we don't even think about how it, how it comes to be and how the regeneration, constant regeneration that's going on. Like, how does my finger know to be my finger? How does a mole uh, on on my body, no, to keep being a mole on the body. Every everything stays the same, even though the cells change. Uh, sometimes two or three times a year, you you end up with mostly a new body, but it's all still the same as the one you recognized a year before. Yeah, that's uh, a way to understand the biofield. Is it's the energetic framework or blueprint that the physical body builds itself off of. Right. So we've got a situation where. You can change your mind and change your life, change your body. You can act, people have actually been able to change things. And I think this solves the problem. I'm a scientist and inventor. Uh, and one of the questions is, did the egg or the chicken come first? Chicken or the egg? <laughs> and I think that we were created, uh, however a person wants to say that, and we can actually be our own chickens and eggs in that it's been shown that... Um, what do they call it? Uh, uh, genetic um, advancements can be made really fast in in biological systems uh, when environmental stresses happen. So the 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 organisms that can change to match whatever the situation demands are the ones that will survive, and they can actually change before uh, um, uh, duplicating, before uh, uh, making more of themselves the actual organism that, that themselves can change. So this is something that Darwinian-like uh, has, has been proven to be a, 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 an effect, even in, in uh, very small creatures, let alone uh, more organized ones like ourselves. In any case, um, I wanted to add, there's an additional thing about Brown's gas that uh, makes it, for lack of a better way of saying it, better than hydrogen, more effective, more therapeutic. And it has to do with the discovery by Professor Gerald Pollack in the University of Washington over the last few years. And he, and he called this the fourth phase of water, but it actually isn't water. Uh, it's, it's a gel, it, and which actually should be a phase of matter. So in between a solid and a liquid, there's a gel state. And what happens is every time water is associated with a hydrophilic surface, in other words, water-loving surface, which is most of our body, most of our body is water-loving everything, all our cells and that kind of thing. It's important. Uh, the water spontaneously reforms in, into a, a gel that they call exclusion zone water, or I, I call it gel in this case. So this exclusion zone water um, is negatively charged and forms uh, a layer on, on the insides of all of our veins, arteries, and capillaries, 
also forms on the outside of all our red blood cells and things like that. The reason this is important is that this gel is extreme, two reasons. First of all, the gel is extremely slippery and is negatively charged. So that means that when the red blood cell, which is twice the size of a capillary, has to go through the uh, capillary or capillary, whichever way you want to pronounce it, uh, it has to squeeze down into a sausage type shape and then uh, squeeze through. If there was a, any friction at all, the, uh, it couldn't do it. It just it would get stuck in there and we would die. <laughs> you know, so the reason we don't die is because of this EZ gel. Now, the EZ gel has an additional factor that J Professor Gerald Pollack also discovered in his lab with his students, uh, which is absolutely incredible and solves a major medical mystery. If you have a small tube that has this EZ gel on the inside, it will spontaneously start to flow a fluid, spontaneously. No, no other energy input. Now, it turns out that uh, there is an energy input that, that helps this uh, gel form thicker, and that's radiant uh, infrared energy. So everyone who has a sauna or takes a hot bath or everything feeling better, uh, improved circulation, it's because your body is absorbing this infrared uh, energy, and it helps make this uh, easy gel a little thicker a little more, um, a little better in any case. So the spontaneous flow solves the mystery, both uh, of the heart, uh, uh, blood pressure, and uh, uh, fluid dynamics that's in the, in the blood or in the body. Because in, with fluid dynamics, anyone who understands fluid dynamics knows that uh, fluids will flow in the path of least resistance, always. So the further you get out from the heart into the capillaries, the more resistance there is. So how is it that the tip of every one of my fingers, the tip of every one of my toes, the top of my head, the bottom of my feet, out to the very extremities that I have, it's exactly the same blood flow as the organs next to my heart. How, why does that happen? That's a major medical mystery. The second major medical history Mystery. I mean, it's the same question as like, how does the apple get filled with juice up high in the tree when the tree is pulling it from the ground, the water, you know, that is, Some that is exactly, yes, that's exactly, we'll, we'll circle back to that in just a little bit, but it's tied exactly into the same thing. So the second mystery is that the heart doesn't make enough uh, pressure to pump the blood through all the capillaries. Now, most medical science just ignores this little insignificant, inconvenient fact. <laughs> But anybody who does the math and understands fluid dynamics knows that you would need thousands of PSI, not not 100 or, or even 200 if you have high blood pressure, uh, um, to, to uh, pump the blood. You, there's no way that it could happen. Okay, so getting back to the, the, the actual answers, the major answer is this capillary cap capillary action. And that's what pumps the uh, fluids from the roots of a, of a plant up into like a 300 foot tall uh, redwood tree or anything like that. You get the water coming up from the roots by the capillary action. And, and this capillary or capillary action is exactly what is happening in our bodies as well. Uh, of course, movement helps the lymph flow and all of that kind of thing, but it, er, and everything works together. But the actual dynamic is this EZ gel that spontaneously has the capillaries pumping the blood, and all the heart has to do is get the blood to the capillaries, and then the vein system uh, is sucked back uh, from the capillaries. The actual capillaries do most of the blood um, pumping. So this EZ gel is absolutely vital to all life forms as we know it, be it as uh, mammals that are running around, or the fish, or the birds, or even the plants. It, it is absolutely vital. And it turns out that Brown's gas, again, this is experimentation that was done uh, via the University of Washington recently, uh, Brown's gas helps form a thicker, easy gel layer. In other words, when you in introduce Brown's gas into the water, the easy gel expands multiple times, multiple. Instead of just being uh, a little bit expansion, it's double, it can be 100 times more. Uh, thickness of the easy gel than the uh, than the normal that that uh, that forms. 
So in addition to infrared energy, the Browns gas really, really helps this happen. And it's one of the reasons that uh, it, it helps all the uh, cardiovascular system uh, heal as well. So that, that, that just kind of, I just wanted to make sure that people understood that the easy gel is helped by the Browns gas, whereas hydrogen does not. Just putting hydrogen in the water does not expand the easy gel at all. But the Browns gas does, and that's because of the electrically expanded water portion of the Browns gas. Okay, just wanted to make that clear. Yeah, no, that's really great. I appreciate that. I, and and you know, as you're talking about it, I'm thinking of how electric that all is in the sense that how electricity works is similar, that there's a cavitation force where suction is generated by you know the lack of whatever the material is down the chain and it's getting pulled through and then there's this hydrophilic aspect of many biological cells um probably all of them (laughs) that uh, you know is it is it the case that because like say the red blood cells being hydrophilic are also being what i understand of hydrophilic is like if you splash water on a person's body, the water like sticks to their body. You know, even yes. if the droplets are on the underside of your arm and you're holding your arm that way, yes. they don't, they, I mean, if they get enough weight, they'll fall off, but a lot of them will just stick. Right. Yes. So that's, maybe yeah, that's the uh, hydrophilic, which means water loving. Yes. So the blood, if there's a thicker, easy gel layer, the blood is actually being like attracted through the capillary capillaries, right? Like that, uh, the hydrophilic nature of it, plus the cavitation force is causing a type of suction electrical pathway that, and I mean, operates similar to how electricity flows in, um, you know, technological (laughs) circuitry and currents, right? It, it actually really does. And there's a lot of electrons involved as well. So, and we are electrical beings. We can measure our electrical potential all over both physical and the and the aura type of stuff that's going on around us. So yes, it 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 all comes it all ties together. And this kind of holistic understanding is something that people really, uh, medical science really should be addressing, but they're not. Uh, I it, things have been perverted way crazy way off the off the in channels that that aren't really helping us be healthy as a species. It's all about money, unfortunately, these days and what they can make money with. And and if they can't make money with it, and unfortunately, health is not profitable. There was actually a study done on that. And therefore, the uh, the medical science uh, tends to concentrate on the on the parts that are profitable. And and that's very unfortunate. We need we need a big change in our world today. Uh, Our whole philosophies have to change about what what is actually important and i i personally think health is more important than money yeah i had a i had a client once joke with me that it's not a very good business model what i'm doing because <laughs> helping them see how l- certain life experiences created expectations about life and beliefs about themselves that are linked to how they experience different types of injury disease or dissonance with their external world once you get that you know, a guy, for example, that had dislocated his shoulder over a dozen times and didn't understand until our session. And it's hard to know this because it's like has to do with when he was a baby that the particular family dynamic he was in as a, an infant caused without getting into the biofield uh, anatomy too deeply caused the energetic blockage, if you will, in the right shoulder pertaining to like suppressing anger uh, because it was an angry household environment and he was like rejecting that energy right away from birth caused that was the cause of his repeated shoulder injuries as I like to say every type of disease or injury that the body actually presents to us is a message from our body about what is lacking energetically or what is out of flow out of balance or needs correcting and then once you solve that you realize oh I just need to get better about, I need to delete the belief that I don't get angry, allow myself to feel anger and thus be able to be assertive in a healthy way. Not that I've become a rageaholic, but that I actually (laughs) express that energy as it comes up and it doesn't get all kinked up in the right shoulder. He's probably never going to dislocate his shoulder again. 
And does he, he doesn't need to come back to me to work on that shoulder again because the actual underlying cause has been dealt with. And in much the same way, you know, you only need to buy one aqua cure from George. <laughs> it's not like you, you repeat customers or anything. Yes. I, and that's, that's absolutely true. That's one reason I offer a lifetime warranty on the machine as well. So that when people uh, buy the machine, they don't ever have to worry if there's any manufacturing error, we will fix it for the life of the machine. Uh, we, we pay the post, the shipping, the labor and the parts. So when people pay for it, that's it. And, and we also, because we believe health is more important than money, we have a one year satisfaction guarantee. Meaning that for any reason whatsoever, if you aren't liking your machine, you can return it and get your purchase price back for a year. <laughs> so uh, there's something that came up recently. Our mutual friend Balderson uh, tipped us off to it. He actually did a live stream about it where some very bizarre, small, like no other videos, YouTube channel showed up with a hit piece on the AquaCure. <laughs> And so you probably heard about this and I wanted to give you the opportunity if, you know, if, if you want, you can talk about this as much or as little as you want to address maybe some of the, uh, what I would practically call slander <laughs> in terms of perhaps like misconstrued or even rumor mongering types of health or uh, safety concerns that were put forward by that video and maybe other places as well regarding the aqua cure that, uh, you know, to me, I could see the flaws in the logic right away, but is there anything that you might want to address in terms of what people who maybe misunderstand what it is or how you create them and all that, um, that you could help clear up? Yes. It's unfortunate that some people either misunderstand or there's competition out there that are making deliberate misinformation about uh, Brown's gas in general. It's not just the AquaCure, though th in this case, uh, AquaCure was specifically mentioned to the point where like this, I think it was 12 or 15 different points the person was making. And in the end actually accused me uh, of murdering my wife. Like it was, it was, it was insane. Yes, if you, if you happen to watch that video again, you, you'll see how they talked about uh, because the way that the, uh, logo of the aqua cure looks like the medical snakes kind of thing and there was a uh um a myth that he pulled from i'm going to say some norwegian mythology that uh, a person took a staff and killed one of the snakes and and uh, and, and talked about my history of my wife uh and, and i think it's how, the myth of tiresias from uh, the greeks but yeah that that makes that make, yeah that sounds correct in any case I, uh, I was actually a little amused by that particular uh, hit piece up until that point where it really struck home in my heart. And, I, and, it, and at that point, I definitely wanted to do something about it. Um, generally, I'm not too concerned because the truth always wins in the end. And the kind of things that they were talking about just weren't true. Absolutely not. But you can... You can um, Prey on people's misunderstandings of things like lie. So that's one of the things that uh, Brown's gas machines uh, use. I, I've tested thousands of electrolytes and electrolyte con concentrations. And when I say electrolyte, we're talking about the catalyst that goes in the water. Because water itself is a dielectric, meaning that it can't transmit electricity. Yet electricity has to flow from the cathode to the anode. And if it, and if it can't, then no electrolysis happens. And uh, so you would need hundreds of volts to normally put electrons across the fluid, this being in this case being water, unless you put something in the water that can transmit electricity, transmit, uh, uh, have an electrical path. And that catalyst, uh, after testing, oh my goodness, it was years of testing to come out to the practical solution of lye. Lye is the best balance of every aspect of a uh, catalyst. First of all, it stays in the machine. Second of all, it's inexpensive. It's easy to acquire and it's efficient. Meaning yeah, that- Yeah, if it was yeah. so like Fukushima level deadly, why can't you just go buy it at stores? <laughs> yes, and if it, it, well, you could up until the point where they started uh, taking it out of the hardware stores and stuff because it was one of the ingredients used to make uh, meth, meth uh, uh, amphetamines. So, uh, the, the police tried to limit people's general use to the lie, 
which actually doesn't work really much because you can just buy it online by the ton if you wanted to. <laughs> so what, uh, the world is crazy these days. In any case, lye is uh, not as poisonous or dangerous as uh, you would hear on the internet. Uh, in fact, many people drink and eat lye every single day. Lye is used in municipal water uh, systems to uh, um, neutralize the acids so that their pipes don't uh, uh, corrode as they're getting the water to you. And so it's, it's commonly put in by the, by the pound or even over time by the ton into the municipal water systems. Uh, lye is used as a glaze on pretzels. So if you've ever had real pretzels and you love that delicious taste, you have eaten lye. <laughs> lye is formed naturally in nature from burning wood. The wood ashes, what they used to do uh, is pour water through, like for thousands of years to make soap, they would pour water through wood ashes and then the, you um, um, evaporate the water and the white powder left behind is the lye. And then you'd mix that with some sort of uh, oil or, or fat and make bars of soap. So people have been washing themselves with lye for thousands and thousands, however many years people have been on the planet. And lye is also a common ingredient in things like drain cleaner and oven cleaner and pot cleaner. And uh, back on the ranch, we used to use it to, and, and it's still used for uh, cleaning the milk uh, systems. Like uh, when, when you get the cows milked, then you have to clean out the systems and we use the lye for that. It Lye is used to make biodiesel. It's used for thousands of industrial uh, things and it's relatively benign. Unlike KOH, which is potassium hydroxide, uh, that'll eat your skin, no question. And when you look online, you see the burns and stuff, generally that's it. I was soaked with lye at one point when a, when a container burst and soaked me from the waist down, uh, and it was about 15 minutes before I could get my clothes off uh, and, and into a shower to wash it off. And you just have to wash until the slippery feeling is gone. And even my uh, very sensitive private uh, portion of my body there uh, didn't get even a rash. So, and that was a 50% lye solution, not a 5% lye solution like the uh, AquaCure uses. So people are, are really scared of lye inappropriately, in my opinion, because they don't know the facts. And if you go to my website, uh, eagle-research.com, so there's a hyphen between eagle, like the bird, and research, and, and, or, or Google search eagle-research.com, is lie safe? And you'll find that web page, and you'll be able to go down and see all the reasons why, uh, it, it, that they don't tell you when they're trying to fear monger uh, lie solution. So that's one thing. Um, I, in, I, I can't remember all the points. Do you remember any that popped out in your head? Other ones? Oh, a lot of it was just silly stuff, like comparing the, uh, the frame of the machine with something that you could buy online cheaply or some, you know, maybe some aspect of the manufacturing process that they were saying you were overcharging. I can't remember a lot of the points. I kind of push it out of my mind after <laughs> yeah, I streamed about it. It's pretty easy once you've used an AquaCure to like ignore the, uh, or understand how well it does for people to ignore the other kinds of things. Okay. The frame. Yes. That, that was a good point. Um, I, I have been building electrolyzers since 1986, Brown's gas electrolyzers. Uh, before that, like in 74 and stuff, uh, I was working with electrolysis, so I understood how to make electrolyzers that split water into hydrogen or oxygen. But around 1986, I learned about Brown's gas and, uh, and, and could see that it was different than the regular electrolyzers. First of all, it was far more efficient. It was making a lot more gas than, than it should. So as an alternative energy researcher, uh, I, first of all, was interested in anything that seems over unity efficient. But secondly, it, it was, they were saying that you could weld um, plastic to titanium. And I, as, a, as an inventor who builds things that aren't on the shelf, like to learn all about these various welding techniques and stuff. So I wanted Brown's gas in my own shop as a welding gas. And I... I got quotes uh, for Brown's gas machines that were way outside my budget, like $300,000 kind of thing. So I decided as an inventor who understood electrolysis, I would learn all I could about Brown's gas and build my own machine. 
Turns out the my own machine that I built when it was tested alongside one of these that had been quoted for me for those hundreds of thousands of dollars was twice as efficient. In other words, it used half the electricity to make the same volume of gas. It was half the size and half the weight. of uh, So I did pretty good. In any case, uh, I can build my own electrolyzers in America, but they would cost twice what it costs to uh, to buy a chassis, what I call a chassis from China. In other words, have a lot of the parts made in China and then bring them over here to do the job. So, and and when this started to happen, because Brown's Gas was entered into Asia and they're way ahead of us over there in Asia, way ahead. They, they have Brown's Gas already uh, certified for medical use, medical use certified machines, all that sort of thing, already over there in Asia. So we're we're playing catch up over on this side of the ocean. In any case, Varans gas machines over there are relatively inexpensive, like a tenth the cost. Now they don't meet my standards. They, they, and when I've tried, I actually have tried to help these people uh, uh, upgrade their machines over there. Their engineers snubbed me big time. <laughs> it's like, what do you know? <laughs> we're we're Chinese engineers, or uh, or Korean or Japan or whatever the case may be. They they won't listen to me. So what I do is I buy their uh, machines that don't have the functionality and safety that meets my standards, and we rebuild them in our shop. It takes about eight hours. We put in a couple hundred dollars worth of, uh, actually it's almost $300 worth of extra components. We throw away some of the stuff that just, it, it costs too much money to modify. Modify everything that we uh, retain in the machine, so we have something that is the same basic shape as what's called a Ving, V-I-N-G, that you can buy at Amazon or eBay or whatever the case may be. These Chinese, or sorry, these Asians uh, sell uh, a lot of different Brown's gas machines that are true Brown's gas machines. Now there's a lot of them out there that are selling, that they claim are Brown's gas, but they actually aren't Brown's gas. And where they just have oxygen and hydrogen coming out two hoses and then recombine the mixture of oxyhydrogen. That's not Brown's gas. You can't get the electrically expanded water with a machine like that. But there are a lot that do use the, uh, um, that do make the Brown's gas, and those ones will use lye as well. Now, the particular one I'm using, they recommend putting in 250 grams of lye into the electrolyzer. That's, that's ridiculous. You can get the same uh, quantity and efficiency of gas production with 40 grams of lye. So there's no sense putting in all that extra it's just a waste, and it tends to plug the machine. So getting back to where we're, we are, when I saw this start to come out, uh, these machines start to come several years ago, come out uh, as little welding machines, I thought my business was done because I was building welding machines, and here they are able to sell them in the North American uh, um, retail, having shipped them across the ocean for a tenth the cost or that I could retail, in other words, less than half the cost, let us put it this way, my manufacturing cost was more, almost double their retail cost so that they could sell them in America. So I thought I was out of business until uh, quite by accident, we, just, we stumbled onto this um, health as application of the Brown's gas. And in that case, by modifying the machine in the way that I'm talking about, we can have safe, practical, efficacious, uh, uh, Brown's gas machines that are are better actually than the ones that are certified in uh, in Asia to uh, to do the health. So what we're doing is we're taking these inexpensive uh, Chinese machines that we do buy from China and you can buy them yourself, and we're modifying them heavily. Everything we we modify everything on the machine to make the uh, Aquacare machine, and that's and so when you talk about the frame, that's what we're talking about. It's it's a uh, it's the basic shape is the same, but the machine is very, very different. Um, let's see. Can we remember any of the other things? I should have actually made notes on that. Oh, no, it's OK. I think that we covered off some of the the big stuff. And, and now people <laughs> can be, you know, if you can prove two of the points are bold faced lies right out, right out the gate, that discredits the rest of it pretty well. <laughs> Or three of the points, actually, we, you know, as soon as somebody's lied to me three times, why would I believe the rest of what they had to say? But I wanted to, in the space of the first hour, I just wanted to check in and see if there was anything 
particularly on your mind of late that you were maybe uh, excited to share with us in the first hour? Uh, and if not, I have plenty of questions queued up. <laughs> yes. Well, we've been uh, we've been so busy. I uh, and one of the things I had uh, started to put in place was a manufacturing course so that I could teach other people to manufacture the AquaCure as we do it here. And that's a $10,000 course that I was putting together. I say was in that the course is pretty much put together, but the way I was going to implement it, I was assured was uh, not good. Not good for the technology, not good legally in that there were things I was going to try to do that uh, would have been called discrimination and things like that. So. We, we are completely reorganizing our business uh, currently in between the raid drafts because I just keep having to expand my business. I, I can just barely keep up with the demand. And I do have an inventory and I am keeping up with the demand. And we have one student that has already uh, uh, passed the course, but the, and, and he's doing really well. But this is the one thing that we want to make sure. Um, uh, can you still see me or hear me? I can hear you, but the video dropped out. Oh shoot! I'm I'm sorry about that. In That's any case, I, that means I won't be able to make hand gestures anymore. All right, so we go back to the. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so we we got the manufacturing course ready, but we're going to have to take a few more months to reconfigure the business before we can uh, bring it out. And it turns out that the advice that we got is really really good. I think it's going to vastly increase uh, um, Aquacure and Brown's Gas genre, Aquacure specifically and, and the Brown's Gas genre in the world, because my goal is to get Brown's Gas into every home, inform people and get it into every home. So it's one of those things that we really definitely want to get going. The, uh, all right, uh, so, so ask questions. Oh, well, I would love to hear if you have any success stories from users of the AquaCure that you could share for us. Okay. Um, I, I may not get the term, some of the terminologies right because I'm not a doctor. But uh, the general idea, one of them that just pops into my mind we got the other day was a woman who had ovarian cancer. And uh, there, there's this uh, cancer molecule or test that they can test for that if you're under 25 you're considered normal and over uh, 25 then it, and she had and they call it a something 125 test or something like that anyway she was way high she had stage four ovarian cancer and she wrote back with one of the best testimonials i've seen in a long time and i've seen a lot saying that her uh, uh, test results came back as a six. In other words, not just normal, but really, really uh, uh, normal, like it, no cancer whatsoever in her body, uh, just from the Brown's gas. That's the only change that she made. And there was a, another uh, study, which you can actually see if you go to the aquacure.life uh, website, so aquacure.life, uh, and look in the studies, you'll see a study of a woman who had. Uh, um, stage four lung cancer that had metastasized to her brain. And in a very short time, time period, like uh, let's say three or four months, you have to look at the study. Again, I don't quite remember. Um, her brain cancer was gone and her lung cancer was mostly gone. Now, I don't know what's continued to happen because that's as far as the study went that, it, that they published. But again and again, all through, we're getting people who have autoimmune diseases of virtually every kind, uh, people who have wounds that need healing, like when uh, uh, you have a burn, for example, on your skin, it'll heal three times faster than with the Brown's gas and without a scar. Uh, we have the people with uh, uh, Parkinson's and MS and, and cancer. Virtually every ailment known to man is, is being uh, mitigated or healed, allowing the body heal with, this ad, with the Brown's gas Mostly it's hydrogen, but then the Brown's gas energy helps this whole thing as well. That is awesome. I love hearing those reports. Uh, 
I actually, I had a client recently who during our, we do our sound healings remotely, but when we got onto the call, I saw they had the <laughs> nasal, what's the word for that? Cannula? Cannula, yes. Cannula. Yeah, he had the cannula on. He was rocking Brown's gas during the sound healing session. So, you know, I'm wondering um, with what I'm bringing up here is like, what, what maybe are you, do you know of with combining things like therapeutic sound with the aqua cure or maybe even to the water before it's drink, uh, before you drink it or things along those lines? Oh, wow. What a subject. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, frequencies. I'm an engineer. So I was able to, one of the functionalities I added to the uh, Ving machine when we're creating an aqua cure, making it into an aqua cure, is I put a, a pulse width modulator on it so that you could actually vary the frequency that's impressed upon the electrolyzer and therefore the Brown's gas, which then carries over into the water. Frequencies absolutely help. Again, we are frequency beings, energetic uh, electrical beings, and anything you can do to change the mind or change the aspect of that energy field can profoundly affect your body and, and even your attitudes and everything. So it's really important to think correctly. But with this technology, we're able to, outside the body, make an impression as well. It's, it's always important to change your life first to, to the best you can and then go from there. Now, I'm not a frequencies expert for health. I'm able to make a machine that can make virtually any frequency and the Brown's gas and the AquaCure, excuse me, machine is designed to do that. Anyone who wants to understand the frequencies, I've got a document that I can send out to them. You just have to email me and ask and I'll, and I'll send it to you. Um, I, I set the machines at 420 uh, as, a, um, as a base frequency because it's a general health frequency. Uh, a lot of people get uh, better results at 528, frequency of 528, which is known as the frequency of love, as I understand it. And Solfeggio, yeah. I, yes. I work a lot with Solfeggio with uh, tuning forks. Perfect. Uh, I actually am inhaling, inhaling the Brown's gas right now at a frequency of 528. So this and is so a, I correlate that really strongly with the solar plexus region of the chakras, which most of our organs actually resonate to the solar plexus. Uh, some of the more digestive and lower abdomen ones are in lower energy centers, but the so like 528, I would say that is definitely a sweet spot. Yes. And a lot of people do really well, really quickly with that. And then there are the rife frequencies. I'm sure you understand uh, the, that technology. Uh, people can get uh, charts and any, any particular uh, microorganism like parasite or ailment, they, they develop frequencies for that would help mitigate it, destroy them or uh, help the body heal from it, that sort of thing. So you can set the AquaCure frequencies to do that. It's one of the really important changes that enhance the uh, functionality of the AquaCure over uh, just straight hydrogen machines, for example. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> uh, very interesting to, you know, I want to, since we, t since you uh, brought this up, I, I would love to maybe hear more about the hydrogen experiments from 200 years ago that you referenced because the, uh, not that long ago, people were into some pretty cool stuff. Like a lot of electricity based therapies were popularized as well, uh, hundred years ago. And so much of that has gone out the window yet there seemed to be definitely something to it. I mean, it's only just now coming into the no popular, not even really popular culture, but into alternative fields, expanding the idea from just a biome and our bacterial flora and fauna, but also in an electrome. So yeah, I'm curious about what you, you dug up uh, regarding experiments on hydrogen from long ago. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of details other than they were experimenting with it. And I think very similar to what we're talking about now, where they were doing the uh, inhalation and the drinking of the water. I've, I've got the uh, four protocols that I use at this time, two of which are internal. Oh, this is important to say as well. And two of which are external. So when you inhale the gas, you're taking it internally. 
And then you can put a uh, bag and arm, for example, like if you have tendonitis and uh, put a bread bag over your arm and put the gas in there, your tendonitis will be gone in about 10 minutes. It's absolutely one of the things that happens really quickly because the inflammation of the tendon sheath, once that gas gets in there and hydrates it, with actual hydrogen <laughs> hydrating, uh, the inflammation goes away and like things like arthritis and, and other places where you get a lot of pain from in inflammation, it really drops off. But in any case, so you've got your inhalation and when you inhale or ingest, like you're drinking the bubbled water, your body decides, this is an important point, your body decides where the healing happens. But if you do it externally, you decide. So if you have a particular wound or mole or age spot or, or wart or something outside the body, you can put the uh, grounds gas on it uh, as a gas with a cup or a bag, or you can put it on as a liquid. Uh, you bubble it in the water and put the uh, water on it, like with a cotton ball or dressing or something, and just let it sit. So there's the two outside protocols, which you decide, and the two inside protocols, which the uh, uh, body decides. And that reminds me of uh, the very first time I heard of grounds gas healing was in 1996, a customer who had one of my water torches, this very efficient small machine I, I would, had talked about before for making a gas to fuel oxyacetylene torches with grounds gas instead of acetylene, thought to bubble the gas in water and then use that bubbled water on a melanoma on his forehead. And skin cancer is one of the worst uh, cancers, the most aggressive and quick, quickly kill you. And yet in three weeks time, that melanoma dried up and dropped off, and he had nothing but uh, pure skin underneath. This was uh, collaborated, uh, uh, duplicated in Germany several years later. I have pictures of that on the aquacure.life website. And uh, recently, I, I was talking with a podcaster whose mother uh, had a melanoma on, in her, on her head, and exactly the same thing happened. They were able to... Uh, um, use the bubbled water, keep it soaked until the uh, uh, melanoma just peeled off. It was incredible. Uh, and, and the hair grew back afterwards as well. Like uh, in, in this case, the melanoma was in her hair. So when it peeled off, it took off hair with it, but then the hair grew back in the, in the area where the skin was. So this is a absolutely incredible technology for healing virtually, virtually everything. I, I don't have a lot of, um, information on what they were doing 200 years ago, only that there was an article that they did use the Brown's gas, sorry, hydrogen, they didn't say Brown's gas at that time, um, the hydrogen for health uh, application back then. I really do need to find that article again at some point, but I have literally piles of papers around me <laughs> and, and in, in files and stuff. So it's hard to keep everything organized properly when I'm when I'm mostly focused on just helping people, every single person I can, get better and not go through the pain and suffering that my late wife and I did. We we got to make it happen. Yeah, buddy, I couldn't agree more. Well, that's great, man, and I'm excited for you know diving deeper into some other topics in the second hour. But for now, as we wrap up to the the free audience on YouTube and elsewhere, uh, let them know where to find. The aqua cure and any of the other things you want them to be aware of as we close out uh did 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 you get a code i have a code yeah yes. and thank yes. you so much for that it's actually been a, a huge blessing you know certain times where um you, you send a payment through for the referral code at just a great moment where I could use a, a little bit of financial help and then boom, there it is. So yeah, you are helping people in lots of ways, including people like myself, who our job is more to amplify your message. And I, I couldn't say thank you enough, man. That is great. So make sure that uh, people know your code. I, I'm, I'm just passing it on. This is a, a gift that's been given to me and, and pretty much mandated to me to bring out into the world. And as long as I'm following this path, uh, it seems that everything I need comes to me just exactly the same way that you're talking there. Uh, so obviously this is a spiritual uh, endeavor that is helping everyone who is asking out there to be helped. Uh, there is an answer and it's here. Uh, we have the AquaCure. You can go to aquacure.life 
and uh, and read all about it. And then when you click on the uh, buy an AquaCure, it'll take you to my eagle-research.com e-store where you can buy the AquaCure and it'll set up an account for you there for the resources and all that kind of thing. So the, and the AquaCure comes with a lifetime manufacturer's warranty and a one year satisfaction guarantee. So really you're, you're try it and, and it doesn't matter you're returning if you do return. We actually only get about one return in a thousand where somebody has said it doesn't work for them. And almost every return, which is less than 1%, is from people who decided that it was a little too much for them to handle. Uh, maintenance wise and so they return the machine but th those the most of the people 99 percent of the people out there are 100 percent satisfied uh, and i know because they didn't return their machine <laughs> so <laughs> it, i mean it, that's uh proof right there if you're willing to just take a full-on return and yes. no one's returning it that's awesome yes and so the, as far as the testimonials go that's the best testimonial there is I, I do have hundreds of them. I'm going to be hiring a person to do nothing but being put the testimonials up online because quite frankly, I don't have time and I've got years worth now. And some of them are absolutely amazing. Uh, I remember back in the uh, time where there's pandemic and people were using it to uh, stay healthy. There's quite a few stories about that as well. People who were sick and gotten better. Uh, there were people that they were going to put it on a ventilator, put the person on a ventilator. And instead, they used the Browns gas. And within five minutes, the person started breathing better. And with three day, within three days, they were walking out of the hospital just from this technology. It was incredible. So it is incredible. Uh, uh, so in any case, uh, aquacure.life, uh, use your code, and everybody gets helped. Uh, exactly, man. And uh, yeah, I want to talk more about some of that hospital stuff in hour two, but the code is interverse, all lowercase. People can find the link to Eagle Research in the episode description and the code will be listed there in case you forgot it. George, man, thank you so much. Uh, I'm looking forward to the second hour. Really appreciate you being out there doing all that you do. Hey, everybody. Thank you for being here for another great episode. Always a pleasure to either talk to George or hear him talk. A wise man indeed. Uh, super fun first hour of the conversation, as you already heard. And if you're not in the Interverse Plus stream, <laughs> that's where it's at, dude. Where we can talk about things that maybe aren't quite so friendly to the uh, free platforms, for one. And for two, it's really just a way for you to have a reciprocity channel or conduit back to me and my channel. Five bucks a month on Patreon. Rockfin is 15 a month, but that's also giving you access to the whole network and all the premium content that is on there. So either thing that you might want to do to get the extended episodes is going to be available in the description of this episode. So in the uh, second hour with George, we talked about what he calls negative weirdness, <laughs> a.k.a the healing crises that can occasionally happen after we do something to improve our body's energetic capacitance, which is dissonance that you go through in order to experience a higher level of harmony. Uh, I loved in this talk how many things really pertain back to the biofield anatomy and how tuning affects the body. Might have to get into that a little more. Uh, we talked about some things regarding hospitals that are I don't even really want to summarize on on YouTube and whatnot. And you, I'm sure you get why. <laughs> Talked about uh, very interesting how the nutrition of Brown's gas, the nutrition of hydrogen, I should say, in the way it's available through Brown's gas actually can reduce your need for as much food. Uh, and we, we talked about what might be missing if someone feels the AC isn't helping them that much, the AC being the AquaCure Brown's gas machine. Uh, then we got into Brown's gas improving muscle strength and nervous system function. So all of you uh, people who like to train your body to get it stronger, you know, this is some, maybe you don't have health issues per se that you want to alleviate with Brown's gas, but maybe your training goals could be improved. I'm very interested in trying it out for that. And I, I'm going to get a Brown's gas machine. I just got a budget for it. <laughs> I haven't got one yet. So I know that I'm promoting something I haven't tried, but so many people that I know personally have tried it and have told me about the results that I feel totally comfortable with bringing George on. And also he's just an interesting guy. 
So, you know, in terms of promoting things you haven't tried, I'm honestly telling you I haven't, but I still think that it would be worth your time to uh, pick up one of these devices if it's something that is in your budget or you feel like it could be of assistance. So yeah, we got into what maybe might be the why behind if someone felt like it wasn't helping as much just to tease that it may be because they're already in pretty good health. <laughs> um, Brown's gas imp improving muscle strength and nervous system function. I already said that. Talked about how it influences lung issues, asthma, respiratory system, allergies, all of that. Uh, and we discussed kids that grow up with Brown's gas and what they might be like and lifespan increasing and, and maturity development, all of that. And then at the end, very fascinating thread into the intentionality and memory of water and how water seems to be able to generate other materials as if it's some sort of prima materia. <laughs> All that and a lot more in the second hour. So I hope you guys joined us over there. Um, that, you know, that part about water generating other materials. We talked about in other episodes, maybe it's been a while, so I'm not going to recap of this a little bit. The Brown's gas machine, the AquaCure, and I think that this is true for electrolysis in general, it uh, generates this other stuff, they call it sludge, as a byproduct of running the machine. And it's very interesting and kind of mysterious that as this machine does its electrolysis functionality to generate the the gas as it does that this sludge comes out that has the same chemical composition as the stainless steel plates that are, I, th I think they're the electrodes of the machine. I'm not an electrician, but I think that's what they are. And so this sludge is generated, but the plates themselves never lose a single ounce of weight. So they're not deteriorating yet. All that's going into the machine is like, <laughs> air and water and I think some lie I don't think <laughs> we talked about the lie stuff uh yeah here we have this sludge with the chemical composition of the plates what's up with that and so I you know I don't know that George necessarily has the same cosmology or you know the question of vir virology comes up of course nobody that we talk to he is going to see exactly the same way that we see all this stuff so I don't necessarily see the question of viruses, for example, as the same way that he does or all that. But in terms of the electric universe model, uh, we, d we do discuss a lot about how electricity works and this conversation and electrolysis in general may be something that goes on on a macro scale in terms of how the earth is formed. I don't know, but if we consider the sun and moon to be the cathode and anode of this realm, and that maybe at a certain point, a process or a charge is put into the system externally to it, <laughs> which is far beyond our ability to understand. But, you know, it's, we're, we're approaching metaphysical, uh, metaphysical speculation with this. But maybe, you know, we have all these stories of like a flood and all the waters covering the land and there's nothing but water left. And then the waters recede and the land comes back. What if? there's something going on where it's not really the water receding so much as the earth is growing. Who knows? You know, maybe we're, and this is more of a second hour thing. And what we talk about, it's the first talk with George as well, but maybe this sludge that is a byproduct of the aquacure is showing us a microcosmic representation of how the earth as a, a type of living organism is actually building itself. I mean, there may be something to that in terms of how the body is replicating itself. Who knows? There's <laughs> the more we learn, the more we know we don't know, which is really exciting. But it is cool to just ponder about it and see that it is actually maybe within our grasp to someday understand how the realm that we live on was created or generated or however you might want to put that. So I do hope people check out the uh, first talk with George. Very worth your time. It's from January 2022, if that helps you to find it in the archive. And again, you know, the plus membership to get the extended episodes is so worth your time. At this point, there are more episodes than I could count in there that have a plus member only exclusive second hour 
Of course, there's plenty of free content. If you just want to hang out with us for that, I would love to see more of you guys in the live chats we do for Wednesday night vibrance or when this episode premieres on a Sunday night, or, you know, I've been doing them more live lately. <laughs> we couldn't do it live with George cause he, uh, he promised his wife that he would stop working after 5 PM <laughs> so that he could actually have a life and, and have some enjoyment. And, uh, man, he's such a driven individual. He's like, considering it like he's bargaining with God, whether or not he's allowed to relax and have fun. And I'm over here like, buddy, you can, you can, because your energy is the message. And so I'm glad that he is managing his happiness and having some time for himself so that when he comes back and talks to us about this stuff, he's as fresh as he was today. And he's really great in the flow state. I mean, if I was over here breathing Brown's gas through the cannula <laughs> while podcasting, who knows what the limits might be for what I could recall. And the way I could weave. <laughs> yeah, so this is a good one. I don't know where this is going to land in terms of date wise. I'm going to post it recording this outro right after the talk. So, you know, I may look a little different, <laughs> but I encourage everybody to jump into our, like I said, live streams when we do those 7 p.m. Central Sundays, 8 p.m. Central Wednesdays, and also to join our Telegram group. I'd love to see some new membership in there. It seems like it's been growing slowly lately, which is fine. I don't want it to just be big for the sake of big. But uh, I, I think it might be because I haven't really been promoting it on the shows. So check the episode description. I think it's just like t.me slash interverse podcast. I guess I could make sure that's true. t.me slash interverse podcast for the channel. t.me slash interverse podcast chat for the group chat. And <laughs> we've been joking around all week because it's got, we currently have 666 members. And uh, so Illuminati confirmed and all that. But obviously, if you've been around here long enough to hang with us, you are probably pretty hip to the idea that there's no such thing as an evil number. So we can just kind of laugh about that. And 666 being a representation of carbon is fascinating. I would really like to see somebody from the Walter Russell school of thought talking about hydrogen and maybe even talking to George about hydrogen. If we could only get him on a vibrant with like Topher or Matt Presti, that would be pretty cool. Maybe his wife will be busier out of town some Wednesday and we can line that up. <laughs> I'm going to ask him anyway. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Spring is spring and it's my birthday tomorrow. So that tells you when this is recording more Illuminati confirmed. My birthday is 322. Skull and bones. And I'm just, I'm just really excited about life. Everything's really popping off in my life. And uh, I'm getting the hang of juggling all the different irons I have in the fire, tuning, researching, podcasting, audiobook making, and uh, whatever else I do, working out, eating, sleeping, <laughs> all that. I'm enjoying it, really enjoying it. And if you want to get on my schedule for a biofield tuning, please do. Please do get in touch sooner than later because there is a bit of a, a lag time from when you, you know, donate to get a session to when you can actually book one because I'm only one guy and I can only do so many of those a week uh, and, and retain my energetic, uh, energetic coherence or, or whatever. <laughs> I've got to, you know, be responsible for my own energy if I'm going to be of any help. And uh, I'm in a good flow with that. I'm really enjoying it. I hope you guys are also feeling that vernal equinox explosion of energy all throughout nature. It's really something, isn't it? I love this time of year. I think I've probably said all that I need to say in an outro. If not, there's always a next time. And I hope you guys are, you know, loving life, enjoying it. Love you all. And I'll catch you on the next one. Take care of yourself out there. Bye-bye.